Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. We're going to talk about the BM slash Circle K three quarter inch ratchet series. These ratchets made their first appearance in the Sears catalog in 1939 for $7.50. And the final offering in 1951 Sears catalog for $8.95. These ratchets sported a 70 tooth gear with a four tooth per side delta slash boomerang shaped pull that offered 5.14 degrees of arc swing. Earlier versions were composed of vanadium steel alloy with a cadmium finish. Uh, later versions were offered with the vanadium steel with a full chrome finish. Later Craftsman versions were. The interesting thing about this particular ratchet is that it's still being made to this day. 77 years after its initial design, it's still essentially the same ratchet with some minor variations as time has gone on and the reason for that is it's it's that good when this was released it was received with much fervor so much so that Sears was working out with a, a contract with the New Britain company for a three quarter inch drive ratchet during this era and the reality is is that most ratchets at the time had a drive gear that was you know in the ballpark of between 20 almost 30 teeth individual single tooth engagement paws per side and they were working out a deal with New Britain for a drive ratchet that would have been within the similar concept of of what would had already been been out and then this came along and Sears was so excited about it that they dropped that aspect of their contract with New Britain and went straight for this so see, the reality is that Sears was a financial sales and real estate powerhouse at the time and even for many many decades after <laughs> after this point in time so for Sears to basically make a 180 this is something special this ratchet was made by SK which is the Sherman and Clove company it's been 100 percent made in the USA since day one modern iterations of this ratchet are made of molybdenum steel with the full chrome or in SK's terminology, it's super chrome with a K, of course, S being SK. <laughs> this is the first Craftsman branded three quarter inch drive ratchet. The only difference between the SK version from this era and the Craftsman one is literally the name on it. Period. That's it. And as I alluded to in the introduction, there are maker's marks stamped on these ratchets that are Craftsman branded with a BM and a Circle K. There is no difference between those either, except obviously for the branding. And what does the, what does the maker's mark indicate? Well, Circle K, if you see it, which when we go ahead and lift this thing up, the maker's mark will be placed right here It'll be to the right of the Craftsman logo. The Circle K was indicative of SK's plant in Chicago. The BM was made at SK subsidiary plant, also in Chicago, the Brazil Stamping Company, which hosted the Brazil Tools brand name, which for all intents and purposes were typically identical to the SK tools with some very minor variations. SK brand back in those times was focused on dealer networks and large contracts, whereas the SK Brazil brand 
was focused on in-house branding. So say at an automotive store or more, typically it was more geared towards that kind of plan or smaller contracts in general. Based on my example, having the BM <laughs> manufacturing code, of course it, it's kind of like bowel movement, <laughs> but it most likely means Brazil manufacturing. Or Bra it is possible that the Brazil plant may have handled some of the overflow for SK, especially since Sears being one of their big contractors was a was a large volume and perhaps the SK plant needed a little bit of help. These ratchets met the multi-branch US military spec and were issued on Jeeps, PT boats, ships, tanks during World War II. And this puppy is heavy. It's nearly seven pounds. <laughs> Compared to the box head style three quarter inch that we've already examined that came out sometime later. This is the my example. And when you compare them side by side, so I'll put it right here, you can tell fairly easily that this is just slightly shorter, probably by about an inch and some change. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Just wanted to show you for example. But yeah, the the SK Derive 3 quarter inch round head ratchet is, <laughs> is, is a lot heavier than even that. The selector is a slightly inset and depending upon the situation that may make it a little difficult to manipulate. Again, this is circumstantial. It isn't as accessible as the, the previous three quarter inch ratchet that I showed you with that big old flip lever on there. However, this does offer protection for the selector as well, being slightly inset. So it's an advantage and a disadvantage depending upon how you look at it. This is the only US made Craftsman branded round head three quarter inch drive ratchet. In approximately the 1980s there was one offered but that was a Taiwanese made Stanley Works sourced ratchet. So if you've ever seen one of those it's easily identifiable by the, the it looks like a Mercedes logo, a tri-star or tri-wing or tri-prop or whatever you want to call it style selector so you can't miss it so yeah this this thing is something special uh, to be perfectly honest with you I didn't think that we were gonna get to review this at all uh, I've been searching ferociously for one of these for some time it's difficult to find these in very good to excellent condition I have seen examples of these just through pictures online where I've been <laughs> I've been blown away by the amazing condition that some some have been able to find these in later versions of the Craftsman branded round head ratchet like this the ones with the the double flag on the sides of the Craftsman name from what I've been able to understand those are the ones that you're going to typically see fully chromed if you see the Craftsman Underline logo, those will typically be cadmium plated versus having the full chrome. And why is that? Well, these were likely being produced right smack dab in the middle of World War II. And chromium was being rationed as much as possible towards the war effort versus civilian use. So the alternative that companies had to come up with was to use cadmium. Cadmium is is a is a good defender in terms of plating for the metal that's used to make your tool. The kicker is is that it can it's a neurotoxin. <laughs> so if you're brushing on this and for whatever reason you're you know huffing in those those metal filings those or fine droplets depending upon if it's exposed to some kind of corrosive or something like that you can become poisoned from it. 
So if you're going to handle one of these and you're going to brush on it, make sure that you're wearing proper hand protection and a, a respirator of some kind. <laughs> but you have to understand also that if it's left in state, it's it's safe. You'll just want to wash your hands, and and that's more than that's more than adequate to to defend you from being poisoned. But I just thought I'd go ahead and <laughs> offer a public service announcement. This particular ratchet was donated to me by a gentleman that literally fought in World War II, a gentleman that was a part of a tank battalion on the European theater. So. This was his equipment from back then, and I don't, I don't know how this person found me, but I'm glad that he did nonetheless. So we'll go ahead and show you the ratchet just in general, and I'll even show you one of the many sockets that he gave me to go with this. So obviously this has some, some age. And he had told me that he had never maintained it prior to me receiving it. And the action is, is very good, despite that. So you can see this is the Craftsman underline. This was all caked in junk. So it actually ended up protecting the cadmium finish underneath. So I didn't take a paint marker and highlight it just to be cool. <laughs> you can see that there's some cadmium plating residue up there. There's some small fragments and evidence of that throughout. And there's a bit on the handle as well. And quite a bit of cadmium plating still left up on the actual mechanism and socket stud. You can see what's unique about this particular ratchet is that it has a dual bearing which certainly helps with the removal of these big giant sockets that go on this puppy so let's go ahead and show you the action I mean look at this I can it's that five degrees real fine and like I said amazing for its time So I've noticed that when I've done this on camera before, it sounds a lot louder than it really is. But at least based on human perception. <laughs> but according to the camera, it sounds a lot louder, a lot clankier. Here's one of the big giant sockets that was given to me. Also, I mean, this was a complete kit that went together. I went ahead and cleaned it up. It had lots of, lots of residue in it. But yeah, I mean... You just slap it on, real easy to get on, and you're on your way. Look at that thing. <laughs> I would say that if the world is about to end, and this thing is the closest thing near you, I would feel comfortable <laughs> entrusting my life to it, if you had to use it as a weapon. It's basically a mace without the spikes. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. So... Let's go ahead in our typical tradition and show you what the 1939, so this would be the first appearance, that's what I like to show you, it's first appearance within the Sears catalog. And there it is right there. And here is its description, an exceptionally handy tool which every mechanic needs. And it says, the quality put into this tool makes it the most outstanding ratchet that has ever been made. And don't get me wrong, the Sears catalog does make some pretty, pretty interesting boasts, but uh, they must have certainly felt that excited about it to say it like that flat out. So, it, yeah, these are something special, certainly. And we've got the patent for it. Woo! Here it is. This is patent 2188846. And just going over it in brief, you can see that they have a slightly deeper selector for the patent, anyway. 
This is kind of just a general idea of how this thing is constructed. And we'll go ahead and see that when we do the teardown video of how all these pieces interplay. And then beyond that, it's just just description, written description of how it's put together. So uh, again, I am certainly grateful. Thank you very much uh, to the individual who asked to be remain anonymous to the, for donating this to me. Thank you for donating a part of your personal history to the project. I'll I'll do my best to take care of it. And folks, you got <laughs> with as heavy as this thing is and all the sockets that this gentleman sent. Uh, it, it was not only a personal endeavor, this was a financial endeavor for this individual as well, because it wasn't cheap for him to send this to me. So, whether you've got the BM version, <laughs> it sounds like bowel movement, <laughs> or the Circle K, either, either way, it's the same idea, just a different maker's mark. So, I'm very, I feel very privileged for the fact that I actually get to present this to you, because I was a little worried for a little while there. So... Thanks for watching. We'll do the teardown video in its own separate film and we'll keep on plugging along.